they are battling each other as well with an impressive, impressive record here. Top four at Worlds is a two-time international champion as well as an LAIC finalist. And as we saw before, playing that Terra Dark Charizard EX paired with Quick Search. So Quick Search making another appearance, but it's in a very different deck, this Charizard EX one. Indeed, and Grant Nelly playing the exact same 60 cards as Azul Garcia Griego, featuring just as impressive record here. 2023 LAIC Top 4 Regional Portland Top 4 Roanoke Regional Finalist and World's Top 4 as a senior, but looking for that big win. Now, Azul and Grant have a pretty peculiar history in their games against each other in Top 8. They played each other in 2018, featuring Toad Survivor against Necrozma Carbiter. Then in 2020 Atlantic City Finals, I'll let you guys know the rest of the results, but it's pretty interesting to see their history. And now, wow, interesting prices here, even. Yeah, more interesting about the history, Grant has yet to beat Azul Garcia Griego and cut. He is 0-5 versus Azul. This is his quote-unquote bracket demon right now. This is the one person that Grant has yet to take down, and Grant is still looking for that major title win. I feel like, in my opinion, he's one of the most deserving and accomplished players without a major title win. And if there's any time to do it, it's right now. Let's go, everybody. Top four regional championships here in San Antonio. And... Azul opting to go second to start the game off. Grant will be going first. Now, it is sort of this weird thing where Charizard does want to go second, but there is an advantage in the mirror match if you are able to attack on the second turn going now, first. You are, can start to take some more prizes. Are we sure Azul chose to go second, oh, though? Because we maybe. didn't quite see the coin flip there. So it might have been Grant winning the coin flip and choosing to go first. But I'm sure we'll get eventual confirmation on sure. that. But definitely an interesting dynamic that you mentioned, right? You Going first or going second is something that Charizard really enjoys against an unknown matchup, right? You probably want to choose to go second, but you know you're up against the same 60 cards. You know exactly what you're up against. Getting attacking quickly could be pivotal, right? Yeah, it's at the risk of maybe having a little bit of a weaker setup. We don't see any battle VIP pass here for Grant. They're not in the hand. I mean, you've got a level ball. You can find the Pidgey, so... This game will progress and start up. I've just been reminded that the cookie contest poll is live on Twitch, so uh, vote for me and definitely don't vote for anybody else's cookie. No, vote on which one you like and make sure you guys check out the content and we'll see who the winner of that is first. The question here, what else is going on in this hand for Grant? And more importantly, what does the follow-up look like? And it's just going to be it, a pass over, and Azul has the best supporter card to get things going. Arvin in hand already, as well as some Charizards for the as well as some Charizard EX few of them for follow-up on the following turn. Will be the Arvin played right away. Battle pass for a Seal Stone. I'm sure we'll see that down as Rotom immediately brought to the top of the deck. Seems to be the choice. Oh, looks like uh, just checking the Pokemon right now. Yeah, just checking the Pokemon, making sure we get this Sorrow prize check that Azul is very well known for. And now we did take a look at the prize cards. Azul did prize two rare candies, whilst Grant prized one. So these cards are going to be potentially impactful, right? You need multiple Charizards out. It's going to be a battle of attrition between the Charizards on both sides, probably two hit carrying each other until the very end, where both players need to be very careful with the card that both of them play, Justified Gloves. This card makes it so that Dark-type Pokemon, or any damage you do to a Dark-type Pokemon, is increased by 30, and therefore... You don't have to wait until your opponent has one prize card left over to do 330 damage. Once they have two, you can get to that damage. A race to two prizes. That is the big question. Battle pass getting played down. Now, what are the two Pokemon that you want to grab here? I feel like you have to grab at least one Charmander just because you've got to give your opponent some credit to being able to play it down. I mean, Arvin, as long as there's a B Pokemon in play, that could get there. I think just deciding what the other choices are. We see Mew as a potential card. It's great to have early on in the game. Yeah, and especially good if you prize two rare candies, right? You need all the help you can get to find the other two and start to pressure your opponent. Now, Azul with the benefit of the Arvin, but this lone Charmander, right, in a world where Grant is holding rare candy, Charizard, and a boss's orders, that could be a risky decision, so... I wonder what this level ball will go for. Was it the Mew? Is it the extra Charmander? Sure, it's the extra Charmander. Yeah, a little bit of an advantage and disadvantage. I mean, you always have to admit, like, 
if Grant just has the absolute incredible card, Rare Candy Charizard boss, then the game is pretty much over at that point. You knock out the only Charmander, assuming you don't hit anything off Mysterious Tail. It does also have the Artisan, but I think in Azul's position, Grant's start was a little bit weak. You really just don't want to give any benefits. Once both players set up, sure, that card is fine. It's sort of just keeping the board standards. It will be an instant charge to end the turn. As Grant starts off, it is a rare candy, but that's not what you need. Is this going to have to play Iono? Sure, you put those cards from instant charge on the bottom of the deck, but you need to find yourself rare candy Charizard to really justify uh, the going first or, or getting the first hit. Let's see these six cards. And that is not rare candy Charizard. And you see sort of Grant just shake his hands in disbelief. Just what do I do in this spot? Now not only is my opponent going to take the first hit on me most likely, but they also have had a much better setup than I have. Indeed, and now Grant prized a rare candy. Two of them are at the bottom of the deck. Now no backup Charmander, so you probably need to dedicate that Ultra Ball into an extra Charmander in fear of Azul's incoming Charizard EX. But very unlucky for Grant. Top decking that one copy of Rare Candy, or one of the two left. If it had been any other card, and he finds his combination of Rare Candy Ultra Ball, we'd be seeing a completely different scenario here. Grant's got to adapt. We'll still play the Ultra Ball. It's just so hard, because you kind of want every piece in this hand, right? You, you want the Mew potentially for, excuse me, for later on. You want to keep the Arvin for the following turn. And of course, you want backup Pidgeys because that's what this matchup is all about. But it is just going to be the Rotom instead, just leaving a single Charmander in play. Are we really going this route? I mean, I feel like you have to, right? You have to bank on this because if you just set up another Charmander, like, you have no follow up. Then you have to rely on another Iono. This way, Grant, if Azul fails to get the turn to Charizard, just like Grant failed, yeah, that could be something that. Like, you end up being fine. These extra cards are something that Grant needs, and Grant doesn't know it, but there's two rare candies prized. However, Azul does have one of those other two left in his hand, along with the Ultra Ball. Unable to get the Pidgeot and the Charizard out. Actually, no, both of this can be done, I believe. With the Luminion off the Ultra Ball, you can grab yourself rare candy and four Seal Stone with the Arvin. You could also grab yourself the Pidgeot itself here. Uh, let me let me double check. So Pidgeot, uh, rare candy Pidgeot, and then use Quick Search, and then Quick Search can find you. No, you're one piece short actually. Or no, you're not because you can. Oh no, you are. Okay, never mind. So you got to go this route here. Ultra Ball Luminion. Luminion's another Pokemon you really don't like to put into play, especially early on because of that low HP. But if it's at the cost of pushing your aggression, it feels well worth it. Exactly, especially if there's only one Charmander in play for your opponent. You get Rare Candy Pidgeot, Rare Candy Charizard, and then you get boss's orders anytime Grant places another Charmander in play. So Grant, against the ropes, will definitely need to bench at least two Charmanders here. And, I mean, going behind in the Charizard mirror is not horrible, right? Because that means your damage output will be higher than your opponent's at any given point. However... That's not great if you don't have a single Charmander on the field. I love how Grant, how expressive Grant is, just rolling his eyes at that, like, come on, man, I Ionoed you, and you still have Rare Candy Pidgeot and Rare Candy Charizard. An excellent start here for Azul. Will push his aggression, and I mean, I don't want to be a pessimist here, but how do you necessarily come back in this game if you're Grant? Going down two prizes is such a big deal, especially with that Rotom V on the bench. That's an easy two prizes as well down the line. Yeah, easy two prizes, and then if Grant ends up mounting any sort of comeback and there's a Pidgey X in play, that could also be an easy target. So really, really rough draw here for Grant in this game one, and this plays onto the history of them playing that we were talking about, right? Going back to 2018, they played in top eight at Daytona. Azul won with Necrozma Carpenter against Tote Viper. 2020, Atlantic City Regional Finals. Pidgeot Control versus Mewtwo. Azul came out on top. 2020, Nox built top 8. Azul came out on top with Mewtwo against Pichoto Control. And then most recently, they played in Salt Lake City in 2023, a Reggie Gigas Mirror. And in Milwaukee, in top 8, they played a Kyogre Mirror. 5-0 to Azul. And looking at this, the 6-0 feels close. It's almost like history is repeating itself. Arvin will be played, grabbing four Seal Stone, immediately getting flipped over him. That will grab the Pidgeot, so this seems like a little bit of an off turn. I mean, what else can you do here for your Grant? You can pivot out of the active now into this Mew with Mysterious Tail. 
I would like to see the Mysterious Tail maybe get used before the Mute. Now, it depends on what you want here. You do have two Charmander already in your hand. I, I guess if you were going to search a supporter out anyway, so it's a choice, right? If you're going to search a supporter out, you should search the supporter out first. If you're going to search an item out, might as well use Tail first, I feel. Yeah, see if you get that item card beforehand, and then maybe you search for something different. Now, we did see Grant pull off an incredible 1-6 to six comeback earlier against Mew VMAX. So Grant has been here before. Grant has been under pressure. Grant has been the huge underdog to win any given game, and he's made those comebacks. So if he hasn't scooped up his cards yet, he has a plan to come back to this. We'll retreat into the Mew. Mysterious. Oh, no, actually... Not going to retreat into the Mew. So this is actually a smart play. Explain to me why this is good, Pablo. So the more prizes you give up to your opponent, the higher your damage output becomes, right? At this point in time, if Grant is able to go Rare Candy Charizard, Counter Catcher, Vitality Band, Knockout Pidgeot EX, that could put us all really far behind in terms of accessibility to other resources, especially if there isn't another Charizard EX set up here. So that is a big ask for Grant. He could also get, get Ionode this upcoming turn, but still six cards, good odds. So there is a path that Grant can take in order to win this game. And the further he is behind, the more likely it is that his Charizard EXs will be able to one Hikeo Azul's Charizard EX as opposed to the other way around. So being ahead in the mirror match does not necessarily mean you have everything under control. Iono will disrupt that big hand. Grant did use instant charge last turn. So all those cards going to the bottom. Azul getting five, Grant getting six. I mean, what more could you want if you're Azul? You haven't even used Quick Search yet. We see Level Ball in the hand. That can grab Charmeleon out. Shh. Oh. Did wow. Draw? Two, three, four, five. Oh, yeah. Look at this hand. Jeez. The only way for Grant to set up a Charizard EX now is by benching that Luminion, but you definitely cannot afford to bench another two price liability at this point. Insult on injury. Things going excellently for Azul. Grant just struggling on every front. Level Ball does grab the Charmeleon, but I mean, it's just extra gravy on top at this point. Yes, it's a great piece. It means that Azul can search out uh, whatever he wants, and it is just going to be the Vitality Band. So saying, look, if you're going to hand me these free prizes, I'm just going to take them at this point. You really have nothing going on, and I'm just going to disrupt that big hand you built up with Instant Charge. Yeah, I mean, maybe Grand Banking on the fact that there's a 10% chance that the Vitality Band was priced, right? And that's how maybe your Rotom survives. However, that is not the case. And we are going to see Azul go up three prizes to zero against Grant's underwhelming hand. Now, fortunately for Grant, he was conservative with his Mew. I feel like this is what we're going to see active. That gives him a chance to find a rare candy or one of the pieces for this potential combo. We, he could also top deck. I feel like Grant is due for a good top deck here. Vitality Band is found. We'll get the knockout onto Rotom. Azul going down to three prizes, and this has got to be a big six cards here. Do we see Ultra Ball or Rare Candy? And there is the Ultra Ball, so Grant, not out of it yet. Can still play this Ultra Ball. And there is a Boss's Orders in hand, as well as that Vitality Band. So, like you said, the math is there. 270 damage plus the 10 damage from Vitality Band. Could Grant have maybe found the first step clawing his way back into this game. Azul is up three prizes, so that means Grant's Charizard EX is now dealing 270 damage. It is not enough to KO neither Charizard nor Pidgeot, but we know both players are playing the same 60 cards, so we could see perhaps a Vitality Band. Is there any way to find it? Probably not. Oh, I think it's in, the hand, it's in the hand already. I the Vitality Band is in yeah. the hand? Okay, okay. I believe I saw it there. Well, we'll see very shortly. Don't see it in the deck, and it's not in the prizes. So uh, Ultra Ball does go and grab the... Looks like the Charmander gets played, or the Charizard is oh, played is. down. And there's a boss's yeah. orders already. So Grant actually has the perfect combo to take down the Pidgey X. Wow. Yeah, all pieces there. So what looked to be extremely bleak, you can see one mysterious tail card changes everything. Now, all of a sudden, Grant has established this Charizard, can use Infernal Rain to... Bring this Mew out of the active, accelerate these energies into play. And Grant is almost back into this. I talked to Grant before this matchup, and I said, Grant, what do you need to do in this match to play? Uh, and he actually said he enjoyed playing this mirror match. But he said, yeah, I mean, all I do is just target down Pidgeot, and 
it works well when you Iono later on. Both players are aware of this, but it seems like Grant was the first person to sort of get on top of this, target Pidgeot down because of how far ahead Azul has gotten. We will see the Vitality Ban. Boss's orders brings up Pidgeot just like that. Shifting a momentum back into Grant's spot. Burning Darkness, 280 damage. Azul does not have any way to search out these specific cards, but does still have this Charizard available. Grant not yet taking the prize lead, but it's the first step to coming back in this game. Now, obviously when you have Pidgeot over your opponent, you have a big advantage. It's on Azul to potentially respond to this by knocking out Grant's Pidgeot, but he cannot do it this turn. And now, all of a sudden, Grant has the spot for Luminion to search for boss and take down his opponent's Luminion. And then he can boss his orders again to knock out the Rotom. So Grant actually has a path to win the game in two more turns. And if Azul doesn't take a knockout now, he will actually be behind in the price rate. <laughs> That's insane. In the six cards that Azul had, he had Ultra Ball Rare Candy. So he's oh just going to be able to establish another Pidgeot EX just when Grant is knocking at the door to come back in. Azul shuts him out, finds another Rare Candy. And to add insult to injury, can Quick Search or not this turn, because the math is not there, but there's a research in Azul's hand, too. But instead, just going to play this Pidgeot down, quick searching for a card. What could Azul possibly want in this situation? Like you said, a way to get around Boss's orders, that could be the key to getting back into this game. Because, like you said, once the two prize mark comes down, Charizard EX can be one hit knocked out, thanks to the gloves. It, it is actually his own Boss's orders by taking a knockout here. Azul will be able to go down to two prizes, and so if Grant is able to knock out any other two prize Pokemon, this is where the Justified Gloves, the Justified Gloves will be the big card for Azul. He needs to set up another Charizard and make sure that he's doing 330 damage in case Grant takes two prize cards this turn. And if he doesn't, then Grant's going to be really far behind. Top deck the boss's orders. So that's not a bad card, but I think if you're in Grant's shoes... Iono is something you yeah. really want to play down. Iono Counter Catcher sounds way more appealing How, to I, take down your opponent's pitch yeah. DX. However, you do leave yourself vulnerable to a potential Charizard with Justified Gloves. But this Charizard has a Vitality Band. So that cannot get the Justified Gloves to deal the 330 damage. I really think Grant should commit. Iono with the Luminion, Counter Catcher with the Pidgeot, knock out your opponent's Pidgeot, and hope. I feel like you have to, yeah, you have to go for that play. I mean, it, it seems like this Vitality Band that was used early on to put pressure on the Rotom could backfire, right? For Azul, all you do is just quick search out one of the two pieces, or the piece that you need, but uh, it is actually going to be the Pidgeot used first, so... Keep on the counter catcher. I feel like he's eyeing both cards. It has to be eyed, like fairly certain that's going to be the plan. Already has boss. Is looking maybe to grab another boss's orders instead, but I mean, it's kind of hard. Your opponent has three cards in hand, that's it, right? So, But has Pidgeot. Yeah, it does have Pidgeot, but I mean, it's the same difference, right? You put them to one, one card less in hand, but you do lose sort of your own, a little bit of a trade-off, right? That's sort of what I'm trying to figure out. Oh, all right, we're just figuring things out. Artisan will thin the Manaphy out. Uh, and it will be the boss's orders grabbed. So boss's orders Grant grabbed. going for this potential double boss strategy to win the game. Could that possibly be it? I mean, once Grant takes... Yeah, I mean, possibly. Boss the Pidgeot again. Is Azul holding the game-winning boss to knock out the Pidgeot? That is the question. I don't think it's there, and, and going after this Pidgeot is really big because... <laughs> Azul can't use Counter Catcher because both players are now even on two prizes. And it's, yeah, I mean, going after the one prize on you, you need to do it. But, oh, oh is it there? No. We'll find Justified Gloves oh, and Lost and Vacuum with the Arvin. Yeah. Get rid of the tool, attach the other one, 330 damage. Wow. Counter Catcher Iono, I feel like, was the play right there. Yes, it's three random cards, but better than three random cards. Two yeah. random <laughs> cards. You have do you have boss KO next turn with your pigeon? You're in the same yeah, spot you're, except you're, Azul has you're guaranteed, one right? Less he has card. one less card. That's the only thing that yeah. changes there. I'm not sure. 
I have to really look back and see why Grand wouldn't go for that play. Yeah, I mean, you grabbing the, the boss for next. Yeah, grabbing yeah. the boss for next turn. I mean, then Betsy the Luminion isn't a liability because Burning Darkness is going to take it a knockout on anything. Doesn't off on the Pidgeot or the Luminion. It's not a liability. And so. we saw the Iono in deck. Wow, interesting things to think about, but it's what you got to reflect on. It would have been a lot closer of a game, I think, if Grant didn't have that one turn, and, and that was the big thing there. Did find a way back into this with the Choice Belt, or rather with the Vitality Band. Boss's orders to bring Pidgeot up, but That's we see cool. what this matchup comes down to. It's about having Pidgeot, and it's about having those pieces for as long as possible. And that last turn, if you don't have the Pidgeot, finding that specific piece you need to yeah, win And the, the game. fact that Azul had the immediate Pidgeot right after Grant knocked out that first one, was able to set it up, was able to go boss knockout on the Mew Research, setting himself up for a next turn win. Uh, I guess Azul had a two-card hand, actually. Oh, was it three. only two? It was just his top deck, yeah. Oh. So Grant banking on, on that. Yeah, I guess yeah, there was no real difference okay. then in that yeah. sense. Yeah. Was the Arvin the top? I think the Arvin was the either the top deck for turn or it was off the prize, actually. Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure, but... Ooh. Double rare candy prized again for Azul back to back games. While Grant does prize a Charmander and an Aono and the Charmeleon, so impactful cards. But this all comes down to the early game, right? And gotta give props to Grant, he did find a way last game to almost make a comeback, right? So hopefully, this game is a little kinder to him. Azul with a little bit of an ultra uh, awkward hand. So Grant deciding to go second in this matchup this yeah. time. So it must have been Azul that won the coin yeah. flip then. So maybe that was the case, but regardless of how it is, we'll see the Ultra Ball played. And the choice here for Azul is what do you want to necessarily go for? Now there is a fire energy in hand. Is this a position where Mew may be your best Pokemon on this first turn? I mean Mew, Rotom, I think both of those are solid choices. It seems like Mew is the pick and now an important thing to take note of is that the lost vacuums both of them have now hit the discard pile so we're definitely not going to see a repeat from azul's side as we saw last game exchanging tools as you will so mew will be the selection off the ultra ball these are big six cards here off of this mysterious tale if you find battle pass you can get pidgey rotom down into play instant charge build this hand up and that's very feasible of a setup to look for that rare candy Charizard on the following turn. Yep, Mew has that double use, right? Can find Battle VIP Plus this turn, can find rare candy next turn. I think Azul is holding a Charizard EX, so this is cool. Yeah, and for the long game, I think if you find Battle VIP Pass, you're in a fantastic spot. However, there's no Battle VIP Pass found, and now Azul's hand is looking pretty mediocre at this point so i gotta wonder do you risk the mew or do you just go for the solid rotom you're one rare candy away right? yeah that means an arvin and mew cannot grab the arvin I mean, you can still go for the rotom with this ultra wall you can also go for the luminion right yeah so there is merit to it but big costly discard for both instances ultra ball is found but azul doesn't really have the resources to afford to discard out of his hand it Super Rod, other pieces that are just a little bit too difficult. And I mean, yeah, this hand is at least okay for Grant. I mean, you've got Ultra Ball in your hand, Rare Candy. Is this a position where maybe you use Mysterious Tail first, see what you grab, and then uh, with something like a Battle VIP pass, you can get down enough Pokemon. But mm -hmm. it's just going to be the Ultra Ball first, playing this out, getting rid of two cards that aren't necessarily needed, and searching through the deck just to check and see what's there. Now, you could grab something like the Luminion, play that, guarantee yourself the Arvin. But again, it's just the risk of putting these low HP, two prize Pokemon in play that makes this early game dynamic going after these two prize Pokemon and then going after the Pidgeot at some point. Certainly. Now, I do think Grant is valuing the fact that he already has the Professor's Research, right? So he mm. doesn't need to bench that two prize Pokemon. If he doesn't need to, he can just try to focus on the Charizards, which I think that's what both players would love to do, just not worry about the low HP two price liabilities that you were mentioning and just establish Pidgeot, establish Charizard and go from there. And I feel like that's what we're going to see with Grant after choosing this Pidgey, just going to go research, losing one rare candy, still has the other three available, which should be good enough. And then 
If you save the mysterious tale for after the professor's research, all of a sudden you're looking at the top 13 cards. Seven from research, six more by mysterious tale. That's some really good odds to find a, rare, uh, a battle VIP pass on your first turn. So it looks like this hand will just get fully played down. You do have to discard that rare candy, but it's a pretty good cost. And look at that. Such a solid hand. Double Charmander, Battle VIP Pass, even Rotom if that wants to come down into play. Battle Pass will grab most likely that second Pidgey, and I don't even know if you want anything else. I guess it's technically good to grab this last Charmander out of the deck if it's still there, but I believe we saw one in the prize card, so... Yeah, I think it will just be the Pidgey, and then the choice really for Grant is how do you want to use this last bench slot? We'll definitely see the second Charmander come down, but do you want the third down, or do you want the consistency that Rotom provides this turn? It's like that decision has been made for the Rotom, which one to price liability is fine, right? But more than one, that's where you want to yeah. draw the line. Or you want to save the, the Luminion for a spot where it's not going to be a liability or their, their damage output is so high that it doesn't really matter. Ultra Ball is found off of the Mysterious Tail, so that could possibly find Pidgeot next turn. Yeah, I mean, Rare Candy's there, so Grant mm -hmm. off to an excellent start. Seems like the player going first, really struggling to get set up. And yeah, sure, in theory, you can attack before your opponent. But what does that matter if you can't get there to that attacking position regardless? The, the fact that Azul saw that Grant failed the second Pokemon of the Battle of the IP Pass, has the triple Charmander, although debating the Rotom. Yeah, Azul, we might see a, an Ultra Wall for Lumidian for Iono to try and deny as many resources as possible from Grant. But no, chooses to just pass, not benching neither the Rotom nor the Charmander, but giving us all the information that there is a Charmander in his hand. Yeah, this is a tough decision for Azul. Oh, You've got does. Super Rod in your hand, as well as Professor's Research, yeah. but do you want to maybe Ultra Ball away maybe a Pokemon here off the level ball? I think that might be what Azul is thinking about, It's just putting this Charizard EX and that Fire Energy back in the deck for the cost of grabbing something else. And I mean, we see the Jirachi and Manaphy come up and that might be what Azul is looking at. Now, would you ever risk using Mysterious Tail before your research since you already have the Charizard? I guess not, right? But there, no. that was a way you could get turned to Rare Candy Charizard. You could, yeah. I like seeing seven cards and then thinning more and then seeing the Rare Candy. That's just a little bit of a better chance. Just It's just so detrimental if you with the Mew Mysterious Tail, yeah. then you just got to be that guy, right? And find all seven to be able to get that mm -hmm. attack onto the Mew. So energy and Charizard going back into the deck. Perfect sequencing by Azul and a clean Professor's Research for him. I wonder if they're going to high five this clean Professor's Research. <laughs> these, are, these are some serious competitors. There's no fooling <laughs> around going on between these guys. All right, so we're going to see the seven <laughs> professors. There's a, there's a smile between them. They thought about it. I know they thought about they it. They thought about it. Definitely cross around. I mean, they are teammates, right? They That's are friends. True. Although there's a lot at stake here. Yeah. Hopefully I mean, not their friendship. Though. Friends. <laughs> <laughs> All right, come on. Let's, let's be optimistic here. All right. Seven cards. And we do see the Ultra Ball. Oh, fast rare candy. No, that's no, the Pidgey. No. Remember, there's two rare candy sprites for Azul. So odds are not in his favor to find a rare candy here. So we'll most likely, oh no, not going to play the Ultra Ball before using this Mysterious Tail. There's one more card in this deck that's not a rare candy, and this six card is not the rare candy. Battle Pass. Azul will miss the turn to knockout, or rather the turn to attack at that. And we see how going second and having a consistent start, and more importantly, a consistent game plan to getting turn two Charizard out pays dividends in this mirror matchup. Indeed, it seems like it's very crucial, right? It's been a while since we've had like a very decisive, this deck wants to go second most of the time. Since the rules changed with Sword and Shield back in 2020, going first has felt like such a big advantage, but the way the cards have been created, yeah, now we have this interesting dynamic where you have to really, really make a good case for going first or second, but there are decks that benefit from it. So Charmeleon will be grabbed off of the Ultra Ball. That can evolve the Charmander that was put into play this turn, or rather last turn. Pidgey comes down, and you see in this matchup, both players refraining from putting any of those two prize Pokemon in play. And things are looking excellent for Grant. Has Mysterious Tail 
Ultra Ball. Now, I'd actually like to see the Ultra Ball get played first, but no, just going to use Mysterious Tail, and he finds a Battle VIP pass, so that can hit the discard pile. But, I mean, nevertheless, still a solid hand. There's Arvin in this hand. That can grab out the Forest Seal Stone, as well as another Rare Candy. And probably the cards are here for Double Rare Candy, Pidgeot, and Charizard. Indeed, I think... The big thing that Grant would have loved to do here would be to get Rare Candy Charizard and boss KO the Pidgey, right? Deny mm. your opponent's Pidgey. Even if you don't set it up yourself, that's like you completely denied from Azul and you can set it up later. However, now that that option is gone, yeah, going for Rare Candy Pidgey, Rare Candy Charizard seems like a pretty good way to push forward and eliminating the Mew does deny that extra dig for whatever piece that Azul might be missing on his next turn. So that will be the choice off the Arvin for a Seal Stone and Rare Candy. Now, what cards do you want to get rid of? I, th I think Rotom and... Uh, but Rotom, while it doesn't have value as a bench sitter anymore, it is always a four Seal Stone target. So yep. Artisan. I, think, I think Artisan is just... Yeah, you got your basic Pokemon out at this yep. point. It's not a card you necessarily treasure or desire later on in the game. Yeah, and I mean, you've seen how Azul has struggled to like get going, get a like, really solid grasp on his setup. So not handing him that help when especially when you don't need anything else definitely good and keeping the option right keeping the option of rotom v plus forest seal stone whether it's now or whether it's later that's almost as good that's even potentially better than a luminion later down the line so i really like this by grant he's gonna be the aggressor this time big change from the previous game exactly what you want to do in this position we'll also knock out the muse so that will make things a little bit harder for azul to have a little less dig on this turn. Doesn't need to have rare candy, so to say, but does want to have the ability to establish Pidgey sort of dodging a bullet there a little bit, not having that Pokemon get knocked out. Yeah, certainly. And, I mean, based on what we've seen from Azul, his turn doesn't look to be too great. Does have an Iono in his hand. Does have an Ultra Ball, but now no more dig for that rare candy. Oh! <laughs> Wow. We're, we're cursing and we're blessing today. We, on are, we really I, are. I'm taking away from people. I'm, I'm crushing their dreams with Peonia, but you're giving here. So you got the holiday, <laughs> spirit, the holiday spirit on your side. <laughs> wow. What a top deck. Arvin off the top to just fetch that rare candy. I mean, it is going to be a costly Charizard for sure here. Um, plus, it's, yeah, you can set up Pidgeot as well. So I guess you don't mind yeah. the cost too, too much. I think that's the biggest issue, though. I think, honestly, I would probably just grab Vitality Band instead of Forest Seal Stone since uh, this hand is just so awkward in terms of like discarding pieces. But it's actually just going to be the Forest Seal Stone hitting the discard pile. So V-Star Power, not available for Azul in this game. Indeed, and we do have access to our list. They only play one copy of Forest Seal Stone when I feel like the standard has been two, wouldn't you say? So what mm -hmm. do you think about that? I, I think at the end of the day... The idea behind playing one four seal stone is this. Like, if you're going to prize it in one out of every 12, 14 games or something along those lines, that game, it's not like it loses you the game. Yes, it puts you at a disadvantage, but playing two, 80% of the games where it's in your deck, it doesn't act as a second card. It's just there. And with wanting to play so many cards, with wanting to be aggressive, it sort of just acts sometimes as a dead deck space. So that's probably the reason why it's here. Yeah, now... Even though Grant was the aggressor this game, Azul is the one that gets the first hit into the Charizard EX. So it's now on Grant to make sure that he has the momentum, or the initiative rather, and he's the one that keeps that up by setting up more than this Charizard EX. It'll be interesting to see how he goes about it. Does he establish Charmeleon on this Charmander? Does he go directly into the Rare Candy Charizard as he is holding the Rare Candy? Although I do believe the Charmeleon was priced, right? So that yeah. could, that would actually be, it would be an issue, right? Because you can't go through the Charmeleon. So it will be a Burning Darkness, 210 damage into the Charizard. Now here's the chance for Grant. Pidgeot, and this is all about putting yourself on even prize cards from this point out. Charizard goes down, that's okay. It's not the end of the world. You can slowly work your way back into things. However, the problem comes down to if more two price Pokemon don't get benched at this point, then you're eventually sort of going to have to play this turn where you're taking a two-hit knockout into something. Is this a turn where you kind of just mirror back what Azul did to you and say, yeah, that's cool, but 
I took a prize before you did, so honestly, I'm in a fine spot. Yeah, it's I. I mean, I don't presume to be an expert in the Charizard mirror match, so it'll be really interesting yeah. to see how both players piece it out. Yeah, Grant a little bit ahead, not significantly enough to where he should feel comfortable at all, and in the end, the resources of the rare candies are very important to keep intact or make the most out of. And with the Charmeleon being priced, I was thinking maybe Grant would be looking into setting up a second Pidgeot in case that ever gets targeted. That way you always have Pidgeot, but the cost of their candy could prove to be too much. And the more I think about this for Grant, like, yes, taking the prize early in this matchup is good. But more importantly, I actually like holding onto the Vitality Band later on because the three prizes taken means that, again, Pidgeot can be knocked out and... It was that piece that Grant sort of missed on that last turn to... Uh, it was so close, right? Pidgeot was out of play, but Azul just had what the exact cards needed. Now in this position where both players are sort of set up and at pace, you see that it's not terrible to go first because sort of the one prize taken early is not the end of the world because it's always a good thing for Charizard to be able to deal more damage at its disposal. Certainly, and now... Very... Very difficult decision here for Grant. That Supra, the Justified Gloves, the Arvin, all of that feels a little underwhelming. But going back to Vitality Band, sometimes 10 damage can be the difference between winning or losing a whole championship, right? So piecing out that, making the most out of your resources, those Justified Gloves, also very key in this mirror match. We're going to see a retreat. Ooh. So I think Grant understands that the reward for having another hit into Charizard from this point out is just probably game winning, right? From there on, you're going to put yourself at three prizes and Azul will be yet to take a prize card. So Grant's going to make it as hard as possible on Azul with a two card hand to justify a play, right? Because if you do grab boss and go after this Charizard, then boss on your Pidgeot puts you in a devastating position. Well... Would it though? Because Azul would have only taken two prize cards. Oh, is it? So then oh, that's true. 240. Yeah. Hold on, hold on. Yeah, so you'd be 240, 250. Yeah, yeah so you'd be defiance. a little off, right? So sure. So I'm trying to. I think regardless though, like you kind of force the supporter card, I guess, for the next yeah. turn. Uh, now, Countercatcher is another live option, and we do know Azul is actually sitting on that card still in hand. So, I mean, yeah, Grant's going to take a little bit of a. Not necessarily an unorthodox approach, but just going to kind of dance around and say, look, I'm going to recover my resources. I'm going to hit your Charizard with a clean one. And if for some reason, you can't play boss. Now, we do have to remember, I believe Azul did get rid of a boss early on in the turn, but wow, look at that. Iono and Counter Catcher, pretty much the perfect cards to replenish your hand without needing to search for anything with Pidgeot and taking this big knockout on the Charizard. So... Was the retreat worth it? It's one less resource, right? One boss down, one counter catcher mm -hmm. down, and both players know each other's deck list. They are playing two copies of counter catcher and three copies of boss's orders. I feel like the norm had been two and two or three and one, sometimes even two and one, but three and two, that's a very aggressive approach. Aggressive indeed. Both players figuring out how to navigate through the rest of this matchup. Pretty solid hand there for Azul. Found Artisan that can grab Charmander. And the big question here is just making sure you have the pieces to <coughs> string together another Charizard EX. And if there's any turn here for Grant, this is the turn to try and play Iono and disrupt Azul out. But even with that, with four cards, you have so many ways to put together Rare Candy Charizard. I mean, putting aside, though, the fact that two of them are prized, there is still one more left in the deck. So that is something to note. Will be a little bit tough, though. Yeah, no. This is the last rare candy available for Azul. He might be banking on finding one of those rare candies, but if memory serves me right, both rare candies are in the middle of the prize card. So assuming he takes the bottom two, he will not have access to rare candy afterwards. Now we're seeing the Artisan. Now we're seeing the Quick Surge. Azul making sure he checked for everything. In the meantime, not grabbing that rare candy. Instead, choosing to grab the Charizard. And yep. There it is, the two rare candies in the middle. So after his Charizard gets knocked out, 
no rare candy for Azul. And it's super small, and it seems sort of inconsequential, right? You're going to need to grab both. But it's actually smarter to grab Charizard here because the fact that you have two rare candy prized means that there's a higher chance of you finding the rare candy off the prizes. So it's those small little micro yep. plays that separate the good players from the great players. Indeed. That's like you play two rounds, right? You have a really high chance of finding a rare candy of your prize cards. Preemptively searching for the Charizard is pretty powerful. However... Doesn't seem no. No rare candy chosen by Azul. So we'll just be the one rare candy left. And now Azul takes the prize lead, going down to four prize cards. This does open up options for Grant to play cards like Counter Catcher. Now, I think this will be a great turn for Grant to actually go onto even prize cards here, right? Target down one of these Charmanders, take the prize card, and then from there, it's pretty simple. If your opponent takes one more prize card, then Pidgeot is now able to be knocked out. If not, the Charizard can be knocked out the following turn at any point. I feel like now is probably your best opportunity to go for it, especially because if you go to lower prizes this turn, it means next turn Iono is going to hit you a little bit harder than it would uh, on the following two turns when your opponent's going to want to play it regardless. Indeed. Now, I think Grant, yeah, he's going to force his soul into a very interesting position. If Grant decides to attack with Pidgeot, that's three prizes taken, right? Then if Azul is able to stop, Establish the Charizard EX with a Vitality Band. He can get Return KO on the Pidgeot. But then, as it will be at three prizes, all right, never mind. We're not doing that. We're letting the Charizard live. Yeah, and honestly, what I think what Grant wants to do here is you can attack with the Pidgeot, deal 120, and because you're at four prizes, this Pidgeot won't be knocked out. And it essentially just absorbs a hit because yep. later on in the game, whether it's clean or not clean, it's going to be knocked out by a Charizard's Burning Darkness. Yeah, that makes total sense. Very good play by Grant, making the most out of his resources as well. And also knows Azul has exhausted two of his five costing options at this point in time. And with them being tied in prizes, Counter Catcher is no longer an option for his upcoming turn. Now, I do have to wonder though, by doing this, you're not forcing Azul to do, like you're not forcing anything out of Azul, right? You already have, they already have the Charizard set up, Therefore, they don't need to find a rare candy. They cannot whiff an attack, right? Sure, they can, um, like, I don't know. It's, <laughs> it's hard to put into words, but I sort of like taking down the Charizard to force another candy, force another Charizard EX from hitting or coming into play. Oh, wow. We're actually going to see the Justified Gloves get removed off of this Charizard EX. That's a card we've been hyping up this entire match and replacing that with Vitality Band. Why was that, Pablo? <laughs> I'd like to know myself. <laughs> <laughs> I would generally like to know myself. I feel like at some point, like what I was originally thinking was, Grant takes a knockout on the Charizard, right? Goes down to three prizes. Azul responds with a Vitality Band knockout on the Pidgey DX, maybe, right? Because he doesn't have a Charizard set up. And then Grant has now his Charizard EX fully set up, doing 330 damage with the Justified Gloves. Clearly, that is no longer an option. So I'd really love to ask Grant what he is cooking up here. <laughs> Could be now regretting things a little bit. Uh, I mean, you got no other attacking choice, right? You got to attack with this Charizard. Burning Darkness, Grant going down. to Four prizes remaining, tying things up. But there is a heavily damaged Charizard over on Azul's side. So Grant pretty much has as normalized at this point, an extra turn, right? An extra turn of damage in play as both players have even things up. Azul will we'll play a new Artisan, so replacing the old one, or rather the Artisan was still in play, right? The Lost yeah. Vacuum, I thought for some reason the, the card, mm -hmm. the only card that could be removed was that Artisan, but it was the Justified Gloves. And another Pidgey here, we've seen how important Quick Search is. Can't blame Azul for looking to get another one of those potentially established later on. I don't know, Azul so can't afford the rare candy resources, though, to do it. So I like it in terms of thinning, and Grant doesn't know that there's two rare candies prized, but mm -hmm. a lot of stake, a lot of stake at here. It's, ah, this, this matchup is way more complex. Like, you thought Gardevoir, match, Gardevoir mirrors were complicated? Try playing Charizard mirror matches. That's the beauty of Pokemon, right? Two decks, the players is where things get different. So we'll see the quick search get played down, and it is going to be the Charizard EX coming into hand. Uh, actually, I think the Charizard's... All right, is the Charizard there? It looks like... Uh, oh, yeah, just grabbing the Charizard, and yeah, we'll see the Arvin get played down. So this can grab Rare Candy, put the second Charizard EX into play, and you can also grab Justified Gloves, have that around for later on, and 
I, I just have to keep pointing out, like, that resource not being available for Grant, it's a big deal. However, the way that kind of works out is if this is the Charizard taking damage, it most likely will be the one being knocked out. So the gloves would kind of be replaced anyways. So we'll see how big of an impact it truly has. All right. So clearly Azul not taking a prize card this turn, right? Which is a really, really big deal. So what is Grant's game plan? Grant now has a knockout on this Charizard this upcoming turn and has potentially boss KO on this Pidgeot after Azul knocks out this Charizard the turn after. So mm. Grant can win in these two turns with two cost effects, but needs to set up potentially another Charizard to do so. Can he cost and set up another Charizard? That is the question. Let's see. Ultra Ball, tons of Pokemon that aren't needed. Has Fire Energy in hand, too. I'm not sure that... So, there is still Luminion, and this is a position, I think, where it's okay to play Luminion down. If Indeed. you play Luminion, you can grab... I don't know, but you can't play Countercatcher this turn, but I think that's still okay, right? You Luminion for boss's orders. You then Quick Search for one of your two pieces, right, for, yeah. for next turn. But the biggest issue here is if Grant takes prizes, that opens up Countercatcher, Pidgeot, Iono, Iono. Yep. and then from there... The Charizard is not taking a knockout on the opposing Charizard, and you see how things get really complicated as we end this, we near this end game. Exactly, and I mean, I think a big piece that is missing here for Grant is the Charmeleon. Charmeleon is prized, so because like if you get the piece for this turn, you grab the Charmeleon, then you only need Charizard, right? But if you're getting Iono down to two cards, you're not getting rare candy Charizard off of those two. I guess Luminion isn't even an option. It's not in the deck, so has it's in to the just... hand. Oh, it's in the hand. Yeah, it's already oh, in the hand. Oh, okay, it's in the hand. So it will just be the boss. Now, a thing that's nice, I think the reason that, like, uh, it's actually not terrible because I actually like holding Luminion because it means if you find Ultra Ball off of the Iono, that can just find you the last boss's orders that way, too. If your opponent's going to target the Pidgeot, you only need to set up the Charizard. But this is why the Justify as Gloves getting removed doesn't really make sense because if Pidgeot gets knocked out by Charizard, then the Gloves gets you to 330. Yeah, indeed. Very difficult situation for Grant. I think it's going to come down to what he draws off of Anayono. He's going to boss knock out the Charizard, right? That's a given. That's what happens. So will put himself at a boss KO on the Pidgeot after his own Charizard goes down and Azul takes two prizes, but... He has a Charmander, not a second Charizard. That's going to be the big problem. If he gets IO Note, I don't see that happening anytime soon. Yeah, I mean, the gloves just not being an option is just the big thing, right? Because even if gloves is not played at this point, then you can maybe dig through your deck a little bit, right? Play Arvin, play Quick Search, or just have this Charizard still available. Like that last game where Arvin was the out Azul needed to win, but... We'll start things out with Artisan, just thinning the deck out, putting some Pokemon into play, or level ball, rather, getting this Jirachi. Here we go. We're entering the end game of game two. It's already been such a long set. We're down to <laughs> 30 minutes. So 45 minutes have already passed between both these players. It's, we will see the quick search grabbed, and it Iono. is the Iono. So the question for me is, does Azul have the counter catcher to combine this, or does he just want to take out yeah. this Charizard in the I, active? I would say you go after the Charizard, right? Because then... Grant's going to have two cards plus the top deck plus Quick Search. Can Grant find Rare Candy, Charizard, and Boss's Orders onto the opponent's yeah. Pidgey DX? There's no way, right? And that's why I really like like either using the Pidgey to take down the Charizard the previous turn. So we did see Grant find Boss, so that's one of the pieces there. But yeah, yeah. It's going to come down to this. Has Mew, right? To it's true. potentially Mew find Rare Candy or Ultra Ball. No, Ultra Ball doesn't work, though, because you don't have oh, the yeah, two it's cards too many, to discard. It's too many discard. Yeah, too many cards to discard. All right, here we go. Are, are the resources even? No, we're actually just going to see the Pidgeot come up into the active spot. Wait, there's four Seal Stone. Can that get there? No, it doesn't make a difference, right? There's no V Pokemon in play. Could Grant have benched a Rotom V the previous turn? And that would have gotten him there, right? He could have Quick Search for Charizard, for a Seal Stone, for the Rare Candy, and played the boss's orders. I think that would have done it, right? 
That yeah, definitely and, would have done yeah, it. Yeah, and you couldn't have even brought the Mew up because there's only two energy in the deck, so there's no way to pivot the Mew out. Grant, with his back against the wall, I don't think there's a way. I mean, wh what's your play at this point, right? Hope your opponent doesn't have boss. Hoping is not an effective strategy against Pidgeot EX, um, and Grant. that's it. Grant's going to concede things up. His Bracket Demon takes him down yet again. Tragic, but that's how things go. Azul Garcia Griego advances to the finals here in San Antonio. If the Charmeleon had been available and had been set up, Boss plus Charizard, Grant would have only needed two cards. If the Rotom had been played down, Grant would have only needed, or Grant would have had it, right? I mean, the chance of you drawing Boss are quite low, but dang, what a set we just saw. What a set. I mean, turns out getting rid of the Justified Gloves was fine, right? You were thinning your deck, which gave Grant the chance to draw that boss, but he needed too many pieces at the end. Yeah. It's either or, right? Justify Gloves or Boss, both of those cards work as intended. And, and what a back and forth set this was. On the edge of our seat, I mean, that game one looked terrible for Grant, but he almost pulled it back, right? Found the combination. Rare Candy Charizard, Vitality Band, Boss's Orders brought up this Pidgeot EX and put himself in a solid position, but it was really just down to Azul. Those last turn, right? Finding that crucial Arvin to find himself the combination of Lost Vacuum and the Justified Glove to secure that final knockout. That Arvin top deck by Azul was incredible. And then that clutch boss on the Mew to make sure that he was sitting at two prize cards, putting Grant in a basically unwinnable situation. Well, actually, no. It was the the Arvin for the gloves and into the, the vacuum. vacuum. Yeah. That was a clutch play. There it is. And there it is. Grab both those pieces as we went into game two. Grant was able to go second. You see him just reeling back when you're that close, right? Keeping himself composed. Had an excellent start, but Azul going first was still able to set the board up. Was a little bit behind in tempo, but it's really not necessarily the end of the world with a deck like this. Grant had the position to win. It was on Grant to find the pieces, but just was unable to prepare the board in time, get the pieces necessary. Oh, so close, but yet so far, finishing at top four. So close to finally getting that regional win. I know it's coming for Grant one day, but it's not his time right now. Azul Garcia Griego advancing to the finals where he'll be playing up against Grant Hayes. Giratina V-Star up against Charizard. How does that sound, Pablo? I mean, I'm actually relishing this finals match because Azul has thrown so much shade That's to Giratina V-Star. Like, has. Azul is Giratina V-Star's number infinite fan. Like, he's the he's not a fan of Giratina V-Star, and now he has to go up against it in the finals in what you would consider an unfavorable matchup, right? Yeah, I mean, Garatina, Path to the Peak is a strong card, right? Pidgeot's your main engine, and Iono and Roxanne plus Path, and even Countercatcher to bring up Pokemon, Lost Mine. Now, there is some cards to stop things. Jirachi and Manaphy is in the list, so that is something to note, but yeah. I mean, a fun fact to actually think about in this matchup, these two players actually played in Swiss in day two, and Grant actually lost the match to Azul, so, okay. so far, Azul is up 1-0 in this set. I mean, if you're Grant, does that make you feel a little bit more nervous going to this finals, knowing that already today, the score is down?